City Council. This is the regular meeting being held on Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. It is 5.30 p.m. This meeting is being held via teleconference. And I'll ask the clerk if she can establish a quorum, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Adams? Here. Council Member Ford? Here. Council Member Heller? Here. Council Member Barton? Here. And Mayor Heading? Present. Thank you. And if uh, um, we could just take a moment of silence, remembering those in need and, and um, so many individuals that have been affected by the pandemic. Um, and so I'll just call for <clears throat> silence, please. Thank you. Um, and if I could ask Council Member Ford, would you lead us in the pledge once our flag appears, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member Ford. Uh, pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code Section 54953, this meeting will be conducted telephonically through Zoom and broadcast live on cable channel 20 and streamed on the city website. Please be advised that pursuant to Assembly Bill 361, the Government Code Section 54953, and to ensure the health and safety of the public by limiting human contact that could spread the COVID-19 virus, the Veterans Hall will not be open for this meeting. Thank you all and welcome. And I'll ask our city attorney if we have a closed session report. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. No closed session items to report tonight. Thank you, Chris, I appreciate that. And we will go to um, mayor and council members reports and let's have uh, council member Addis, do you wanna start us off this evening? Thank you, mayor. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, no major announcements, but I do wanna thank the public. We had a lot of um, public comment come in through email today and I had a chance to uh, read throughout the day and I want to appreciate folks who most of it was weighing in on public health and I just want to appreciate the community's concern um, especially since council has expressed an interest in community health and so I just want to say thank you to those that took the time today. Thanks council member I just appreciate that. Council member Ford any report for you this evening? <laughs> No report at this moment, uh, Mayor, but I like to echo what Council Member Addis just said. And I'm just always so impressed with how many um, of our members of our, of both Moro Bay and Los Osos today um, are interested in volunteering their time and putting in the effort to help our city. Um, it's just, it impresses me and I am just so proud. So thank you to everyone who applied today. Great, thank you for that. Council Member Heller, sir. Uh, I had no announcements tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Heller and Council Member Barton. Any announcements? Council Member Barton, you're still muted. <laughs> there you go. We can't, can't hear you, Laurel. There you go. Oh, we can now. Yeah, there we go. Great. I'm, I'm looking forward to Friday uh, being able to go and take a look at the county's um, Kansas Avenue site. Um, it's a parking area for uh, those in need of, of shelter, and I'm um, just very interested in seeing how that's going. 
and I'll I'll be uh, with uh, Council Member Ford also. Great, fantastic. Hopefully, you can give us a report at the next meeting on how that's going. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And uh, for myself, we've I've had um, a couple of community members um, ask um, <clears throat> if the city could perhaps give. Um, further updates, um, the, the guidance sometimes from the county and or the CDC or other agencies is a bit confusing. And so we had in the past um, produced a number of um, videos to update the public on COVID-19 related issues, um, changes to county mandates, state mandates, et cetera. So um, I will be doing uh, tomorrow a series of short vignettes on such things as the appropriate types of masks that should be worn according to uh, CDC guidelines and demonstrating those masks, um, giving an update on the availability of such masks, um, and also the fact that there are a number of um, fake masks out there and what to watch out for. Um, also information on vaccinations, um, uh, which um, vaccinations are available for which age group where you can find vaccinations um, and, and just information such as that. Just trying to clarify for the public because sometimes I know um, as we've all experienced, it's difficult to navigate through some of the websites, especially the CDC, uh, I must say. So um, this will be uh, four or five, um, probably two minute videos on uh, those types of subjects. Um, they should be released by the city in the next next couple of days. And so I just wanted to make the public aware of that. And I look forward to being able to share information on COVID-19 with the city as well. And with that, um, Mr. Collins, do you have any announcements? Uh, no, Mayor, I do not. Thank you. Okay. Not too many announcements this evening. Well, that brings us to um, our presentations for this evening. And Dana, if you could promote Mr. Eric Dowell. Um, let me know if he is present. Working on that line on you. it, please. Sure. <laughs> Here we go. And his screen says David Holling, but that's Mr. Dowdle joining us. Okay. Eric, can you hear me? You're muted, uh, Eric. Okay, how's that? That's perfect. Good to so see you. You're, you look great. Hey, you, you do too, but I can't see you. So I know you look great because you always look great. But um, Write this down. Thanks for being here this evening. Uh, first, I want to thank on behalf of the City Council, um, Eric Dowdle for joining us tonight. Eric is the Dowdle of Dowdle Puzzles, a company that inspires thousands of people each year for their work uh, in folk art puzzles that tell a story about various communities across America. Millions of his puzzles have been sold worldwide, inspiring and engaging those who love to put puzzles together. And many of us have joined the category of puzzle enthusiasts during the pandemic. And I'll tell you, Eric, right now, true story, my wife has on the kitchen table the Eric Dowdle Morro Bay puzzle. She's about halfway through. It's because she's a, a, a puzzle fanatic and had a number of puzzles to complete, but she finally got to yours. True story. Are you helping her? That's the question. Uh, you know what? Um, <laughs> I have tried, but she will not let me get close to the table. <laughs> I think she wants we have a category for those kinds. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to protect the integrity of the puzzle. The Moore Bay puzzle is a beautiful rendition of our waterfront, and it's clear from viewing the puzzle that Mr. Dowdle spent a lot of time and great care in developing it. The folk art puzzle really tells the story of Morrow Bay, which is the combination of natural beauty of our surroundings and the people who inhabit this beautiful place, which we make our town, which make our town so amazing. Um, 
this puzzle is truly loved by residents. I think it's a wonderful experience to put it together, as my wife tells me, and see all the details of our community. I hope that everyone in Morro Bay picks up a puzzle. They are still for sale at uh, several waterfront businesses, including Giovanni's, The Shell Shop, and Hungry Fisherman. Mr. Dowdle, I want to personally, on behalf of the council, um, thank you for making such an amazing puzzle uh, for our community. You did an outstanding job, and it's a source of great pride for our residents. And as Morro Bay is a tourist destination, it will serve as an important tourism marketing tool as well. Further, um, I personally want to thank you um, and Morro Bay Beautiful for the great 9-11 event that was hosted at the community center last year. I had the um, opportunity of being able to attend, um, to address the community, and was inspired by the work that Mr. Dattle has done, not only across the country and world, but also for the city of Morro Bay. Um, it was nice for our community to come out and celebrate Morro Bay's birthday, um, remembering that um, and, and remembering our first uh, responders who sacrificed themselves to save others uh, on 9-11. Um, and I want to personally thank our Morro Bay first responders as well. It was a real uh, treat to participate alongside my fellow council members and our staff to celebrate and remember uh, with our community. And finally, Mr. Dowdle or Eric, if I may, I want to thank you for your kindness and generosity in donating a large Morro Bay puzzle art piece for us to display in our community center. We will cherish the gift for generations to come. Um, Mr. Dowdle, I want to turn the floor over to you and again say thank you so much for what you've done and we look forward to hearing um, what you're going to be doing next. So, sir, thank you and I'm going to let you go ahead and speak. Well, first of all, thank you. It, this is an honor. Um, we've done so many projects. Um, when something comes along that grabs your attention like this one has, uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time going, why is this one so special? What, what was it? And, and, and it, it's not hyperbole to say there is something special about your town and city and people. And, and I love to go in and really feel the, the energy of a place. And uh, it's not hard for me to just gush about how wonderful uh, the town is, but the people. I mean, each owner that we met with of the businesses and, the, and then the people that attracts, the tourists. There's a story to tell, and we love doing that. And it was, it was an honor to do it. Uh, the people that we participated with, um, you know, and, and my staff, when my staff raves, uh, that's what I love to brag about because my staff's wonderful. When they come back and go, we've never been treated so well. Um, this is a high bar that you've set for the others out there, which uh, leads us to a, kind of a fun announcement, not an announcement, but more of a tease. Um, I made a, a comment while I was there that we are, we've been asked by um, the, go the government to prepare America for its 250th birthday. And for years and years, I've been looking forward to this. And we have a plan and an idea of how we can kick this off. And what I'm, I'm, I'm teasing is that we're looking forward to perhaps come to your town in a few months and kick off this celebration with um, an activity of some kind. We will, we will uh, have more details coming, but I'll give you a tease right now. If you'll come with me, behind me, you can see that there is a puzzle. This is the world's largest, Eric, your camera's off. It is, my camera's off. Well, let's see if we can turn that. Perhaps you were voice only, but your camera's off. We want to see what you're looking at. All right, we're working on it. <laughs> a kind of anticlimactic <laughs> announcement. No worries. We're working on it. Here you get this it's it's tech savvy people like here we go. I can feel it coming. <laughs> Looks a lot like me. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, no, there's Jeff. Jeff, you look up. Hey, hey there, there he is. is. It's All a right. miracle. It's a miracle. Hey, <laughs> this is the first time this has happened to you guys, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it never happens. <laughs> exactly. So what I wanted to tease behind me, um, if you walk with me just for a second, this is the world's largest wall puzzle. Wow. Um, took us a few months to put together. You'll see the countries behind me, but there's over 190 different cities in this painting. We look forward to doing something like this with the town of Morro Bay. Yet to be talked about, but no one has ever seen this. This wow. was done, this was done um, exactly two years ago before COVID. And we had all this PR and all, and we had celebrities all lined up to come in and put their pieces into the puzzle. But uh, well, with COVID, we, we had to kick it down the road. So you are the first to officially see this. Wow. And like I said, we, we are looking forward to coming to your town and doing a special party uh, celebration of Morro Bay. And uh, future um, details will be coming. So bring it on. Well, yeah, that is fantastic. This is a little more of a. <laughs> there we go. Wow. That is huge. Wow. <laughs> That's huge. That's not going to fit on my kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> that's disappointing because that's where it's going. <laughs> it, it, Eric, well, thank you so much. You're an inspiring uh, gentleman, and you do some great work, and just it's really fun. Uh, I'm hearing from you and being with you. I also want to thank, um, again, Moro Bay Beautiful and Ann and Ron Reisner for their leadership and in putting the 9-1-1 um, event together and celebrating our community's um, anniversary this this past uh, September, um, and appreciate them greatly and their organization. And let me ask, are there any council members that um, want to make any comments? I do, of course. <laughs> of course, I saw uh, Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Heller and then Council Member Ford. Oh, sorry. Uh, Eric, great to see you again. Love your wall yeah. puzzle. It's just, just amazing. Just absolutely amazing. And thank you again for coming out and helping us with our birthday celebration and bringing your team. And it just was a very exciting event. And really appreciate you and and, and the CEO of the company coming out as well. So thank you so thank much. You. I look forward to seeing you again. I, I love that tease. Looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. I, uh, the other day I'm going... It's all in place. There's a few things that had to happen, so I appreciate, I appreciate your excitement. Uh, we're excited. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate you. Thanks, Council Member Heller. Council Member Ford, I saw your hand up as well. Thank you, Mayor. And then uh, Council Member Addis does as well after me. Um, uh, Eric, thank you so much for being here. Th I, I had the pleasure of getting to see you in person at the 9-11 event and, um, you know, purchased a bunch of puzzles for, for Christmas for family members. And, I, ha you know, you signed them. And now I think they're afraid to open them. <laughs> so gone down in value. I don't know. <laughs> so, but I just want to thank you. And I also put together your puzzle. I really enjoyed it. My husband and I, you know, did it one evening and it was just a trip down memory lane and just like, you know, it was just really enjoyable. The most enjoyable puzzle I've ever put together. So thank you for all that you've done for our community and thank you to Morro Bay Beautiful as well. All of the members there for, for bringing this here. And I'm just very proud of uh, what was accomplished so thank you and, and i'm excited about the announcement as well thank, thank you, you council member for council member Addis. i see your hand thank Please. you so much yeah thank you mayor and uh, council member heller for your efforts in this and uh, mr dowdle we really appreciate it i gave my mom one uh for christmas and she already finished it not that it's a contest but um we've really <laughs> enjoyed won. yeah but she did win so we've really enjoyed it and just appreciate all the efforts that went into this venture thank you Great. Eric, thanks. And, and that's an exciting tease that you gave us this evening. Thanks for taking the time to be here tonight. Uh, we, again, uh, give you our thanks uh, from Morro Bay and look forward to seeing you next time when, when this new tease is completed. We look forward to it. Thank you again. And again, it, this has been a wonderful experience. I can't thank you enough. Great. Have a great evening. And thanks for being here tonight. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, that takes us to our second presentation. Um, if we could promote our esteemed uh, Citizens Finance Advisory Committee Chair, 
Um, welcome Chair John Martin, who will be giving us our uh, Measure Q and E quarterly report. John, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and hello, uh, City Council. Um, is there any way to get the uh, the PowerPoint up, or can we? Can we do you want me to do it without the PowerPoint? Um, see, we'll see if we can get this up for you. If not, we can just proceed without it. Dana or Scott, do we have it? I right, give me a minute. I'll pull it up. Okay, I think. John, if you just want to just start, and I can I can see if I can pull it up while you. Okay. All right. Well, the purpose of this um, presentation is to summarize the CFAX review of the Measure Q and Measure E fiscal year transactions, and that's for the fiscal year that ended June of 2021. Uh, this is the first year that Measure E uh, was in place. And so the numbers are a little bit different than what we've reported in prior years on just Measure Q. And then I'll also report on other CFAC activities during the past year. So the CFAC met in December of 2021, and we reviewed and discussed all of the Measure Q and E fiscal year transactions. And uh, in addition to myself, the members of CFAC are Barbara Spagnola, Homer Alexander, Lois Johnson, Bart Beckman, Tina Wiener, and Stephen Peck. And these are all folks who are uh, very dedicated to the city and, and have done a very good job on this committee. So I want to thank them for their work. And John, we have so, your slides up. I uh, just want to let okay, you know. Okay, great. So yeah, so we're on the second one there. Thank you. So the measure uh, Q and E financial summary, and these two measures, although they are many, many years apart as far as the voter approval, they will be um, considered together, and they, I believe the funds are, are also deposited in one fund, so uh, everything will be considered together for those two measures. The tax revenue for the fiscal year was just a little shy of $2 million. Uh, 1.11 million from Measure Q and 869,000 from Measure E. And that uh, amount from Measure E was only for a few months uh, as it didn't become active until I believe it was April. And uh, now going forward though, uh, future reports, you're gonna see combined revenues of close to three and a half million uh, probably next this, this fiscal year coming up. Total expenditures and transfers out were 1.32 million. And so there's uh, about a $665,000 uh, additional carryover just from the fiscal year's activity. So uh, revenues exceeded expenditures by $665,000. Uh, the carryover balance as of June 30th is 1.31 million. The, there's a debt service reserve that's one of the conditions of the uh, the loan for the fire station financing, and that's eighty one thousand. Uh, and and the unassigned fund balance is one point two three million. So the uh, uh, the uh, committee is is uh, deferring any kind of recommendation on how that unassigned fund balance should be used until the city goes through the mid year budget review. I also want to point out that the cash balance, you know, the fund balance is 1.23 million. The cash balance is only 439,000. So there's about an $800,000 difference between the fund balance and the cash. And the reason for that is because the state does not pay the city the May and June sales tax receipts until after the fiscal year ends. So there's always going to be this rather big difference, probably somewhere between six and 800,000 will be a typical difference between the fund balance and the cash balance because of that uh, receivable from the state. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So as far as the expenditures, we'll take a look at how the money was used. Uh, the fire, fire department expended about 480,000 and the, uh, that went to the vacation relief uh, and overtime with the intent of maintaining four personnel per shift. This was a goal that the city council 
set uh, many, many years ago and, and measure Q and now measure E will enable that to continue. The fire station debt service, uh, 68,000. And <clears throat> that is a, a, little, a little bit of a, a variance from what the budget shows because last fiscal year, there was a little bit of an uh, error in the way that the interest accrual was accounted for. And so there's the unwinding of that error from last year. The actual debt service was 83,294, but on the books it's gonna show it was 68,000 for that correction. The fire safety equipment and gas detectors uh, were purchased for $26,000 and $56,000 was spent to, uh, as one of the payments, I believe there are three more payments after this year for the uh, replacement fire engine debt service. Now this next one is, is a new thing. Uh, it happened with Measure E, and that is that $282,000 was transferred to the general fund reserve uh, to protect the general fund's uh, stability, uh, sustainability. And uh, that was in the budget, and it was executed at the end of the year. Uh, next slide, please. For street maintenance, uh, $425,000, but uh, only 10,000 of that was actually spent uh, on, on just regular maintenance. 415,000 was actually transferred to the pavement management plan uh, fund and will be spent the next time that there's a, a major road contract. Uh, probably something worth pointing out to the council on this is that uh, pre-COVID, Measure Q was uh, spending about a half a million dollars a year on road work. And in the two years of COVID, there hasn't been any of that road work done. And so there's quite a backlog, uh, and that may be one of the contributing factors for why there's such a large uh, uh, unassigned fund balance in, in, this, uh, in this fund. So I'm not sure what the plan is going forward, but just something to keep in mind that Measure Q really interrupted that flow of, of uh, paving projects. The next item, uh, $132,000 was spent by the police department, and that was for uh, overtime, standby pay, and other pay, $83,000. Uh, 29000 went to uh, payments to the sheriff for the task force's uh, computer-aided dispatch and data lines, and that's a standing um, expenditure. That, that happens every single year. And then $20,000 for first responder kits and active shooter kits. And then the last thing there, storm drains, uh, no money spent on storm drains. And, and that's another notable thing is that storm drains uh, to protect the water quality of the bay was one of the things that was specifically mentioned in the Measure Q uh, back in 2006. And to date, there have, hasn't been anything spent on storm drains. Uh, next slide, please. So um, the CFAC did approve uh, all the Measure Q and E, tra e transactions uh, during the fiscal year. And I will say that all of the expenditures were appropriately expended. They were uh, consistent with the purposes for which both of those measures were um, were approved by the voters, but um, legally, um, those are general sales tax revenues and actually can be used for anything that the city council wants to use them for uh, legally. But in fact, they, they were used for those specific things listed in the, um, the measures during the fiscal year. As I mentioned earlier, the 1.23 million in unexpended, unassigned fund balance uh, is something that we have not considered what to do with, and uh, perhaps we'll be making a recommendation to the city council uh, if we get involved with the mid-year budget review. And then finally, um, the, um, we will continue to uh, review Measure Q and Measure E uh, funding and expenditures going forward. And we, we do that twice a year pursuant to the um, 
the council's direction. So leaving now, we'll move on to other CFAC accomplishments during the year. Uh, we reviewed two quarterly budget reports with feedback provided by uh, city finance staff. Uh, this year, we will only be doing the one during the mid-year budget review. Um, the, the, the one that um, happens after the first three months of the fiscal year has been deemed to not be very useful. And with the um, limited uh, accounting staff right now that the city has during the, this transition, uh, it, was, uh, it was dispatched. The um, second thing we'll review and recommend uh, for the uh, wastewater reclamation facility capital project quarterly reports. Uh, we get those every quarter, and it is using uh, a lot of our available time, but that's something that we will continue to do until that project is complete. Uh, we review the quarterly investment reports, um, and the city is doing a good job on that, both in their investment strategy and in their reporting. And then we do some additional miscellaneous reviews and special assignments that the city council uh, assigns us such as the city council compensation and then the liability for both the CalPERS uh, retirement and the OPAB or other post-employment benefits liability. And I believe the city council has taken those up already. Next slide. As far as upcoming activities, we will be welcoming uh, new CFAC members. There were four seats that uh, uh, became available on January 31st, and the City Council just assigned or, or selected those two, uh, those four people. They'll be starting on February 1st, and so their um, introductory meeting will be at the February meeting. We'll continue doing the Measure Q and E oversight. We uh, will review the fiscal 2021 annual comprehensive financial report. Typically, uh, by the time I make this presentation, or the chairman makes this presentation, uh, we will have done that. But this year, uh, it has been delayed a little bit. There's a new auditor uh, that the city has hired, and um, we have not received that document yet to review. So that's something that will be coming up in the next month or two. And then uh, participation in the mid-year budget process. Um, don't know exactly what our role will be. Uh, we do have a, a dark meeting, uh, or I should say our month of March is dark. And so sometimes the fact that we don't meet in March uh, uh, makes, it unable, makes us unable to get as involved as we might otherwise do uh, with the budget. And as same with the uh, review of the 10-year general fund forecast. That's one of the things that's actually in our um, in our uh, bylaws, the, one of the standing tasks that the city council has given us. And last year, we were not able to actually do that because of that, the fact that we don't meet in March. And we'll continue reviewing the quarterly WRF reports as well. That completes my report, unless you have any questions. John, uh, thank you so much for the oversight of measure Q&E. Um, and the work um, for, of CFAC on that and also the other initiatives that you were involved in. We are so appreciative of the work that you and the CFAC members have done. And thank you for your leadership as chair. We appreciate that greatly. And I also want to thank our citizens uh, for passing measures Q&E that have really allowed the um, city's financial status to improve tremendously. And thank you for highlighting the fact that the funds have been uh, spent according to plan. I, I appreciate that. So any council member questions of Chair Martin? Uh, council member Heller, yes, please. Uh, just a comment, John, I can't thank you and Barbara and Homer, Lois, Bart, Tina, and Stephen enough for your contribution to the community. It's a great report, and I always look forward to seeing your recommendations and your comments, and your review is always very thorough and professional, so I want to just take a minute to thank you and the entire advisory committee for your work and looking forward to future reports. Thank you, John. Thank you.
Thanks, Council Member Heller. Any other uh, questions or comments by Council? Yes, Council Member Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Um, John, thank you so much for that report and to everyone um, that helped out with that. Um, you know, you guys, as you as you mentioned, you know, the wharf itself takes a lot of time um, to go through, you know, all that you guys go through to help um, to help our city. And I just really want the citizens of Morro Bay to recognize that very few um you know, it, it doesn't, it, we don't have that many people really on all these boards. When you really add them up, when, it, when you compare it to the entire, you know, all, all that live here in Morro Bay, it's very few that um, are involved in all of this. And um, it's so valuable. And um, and as we mentioned earlier today, it was exciting to to do, you know, the appointments today to CFAC and to other advisory boards. But uh, I just want to encourage other people, um, you know, to come forward in the future to get involved because it, it really does take people like you, John, and the others on the board um, it, it, to run the city and to be successful as a city. So thank you for this, this report. I really appreciate it. And um uh, and that's all I have. I have no questions. Thank you, Councilmember Ford. Any other comments or questions? Councilmember Addis, yes, please. I'll just say a quick one, and thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me to John Martin. I got to serve uh, with him on CFAC, and just appreciate all of the all of the work that has gone into this, both to you and to Barbara, who's no longer with us. But I know how much time and energy you put into this, and appreciate it. Thank you, Councilmember Addis. John, again, thank you. It's a pleasure to be the CFAC liaison for Council. And again, please thank um, the Citizens Finance Advisory Committee members for their great work. Will do. Thank you. Okay, John. Thank you so much. This is a receive and file. That will bring us to public comment. This is a general public comment for members of the community that uh, cannot be here to comment on items on our agenda this evening or any items you wish to speak to regarding the city. General public comment is now open. And James, do we have any general public comment, sir? We have three hands up from the attendees. Uh, first one looks like Carol Truesdale. Okay. And uh, welcome, Carol. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Mayor Heading and all the staff. By the way, Happy New Year. I want to compliment uh, Dana Swanson for her opening up on December 29th when the city was um, closed for vacation to take our, our visit with uh, Betty Winholz and myself on the RV Campsite Initiative to count the votes. And I want to compliment her on the professionalism and the accuracy in which uh, we felt very comfortable how the process went. And I also want to compliment her on arranging for tomorrow, the 26th and 27th, to count those votes to see where the initiative takes us. So, Dana, kudos to you. And I really appreciate your time and your effort. And that's about it. Thank you, Carol, for that recognition. We do appreciate Dana greatly. Um, James, next public comment, please. Next public comment is from Aaron Ox, I believe. Aaron Oaks, say hey, welcome, Aaron. Welcome, Aaron. Are you there? James, is it here? Oh, there you are. Welcome, Aaron. All right, thank you for having me, council and staff. This is Aaron Oaks of Morro Bay. I just have a couple of comments, just real quick. Um, I, I heard from the council members just a short while ago that two of them are planning a trip to Kansas Avenue um, to check out the, the new um, homeless site there. And I'm looking forward to their report and I'm hoping that their trip could be reported on at a future council meeting and possibly folded into a discussion item about homelessness. And I would like to see that agendized at some point in the future. Uh, the second thing I wanted to bring up is um, I wanted to express uh, my support for uh, resolution A9 
um, in support of women's reproductive rights. I think this is a, a, a good step forward for the city to establish uh, a standard um, for women that all women's rights should be respected and protected, especially during times like these. The third thing I wanted to express is my support for um, AB1400, which is a Medicare type program for all Americans. And uh, we, uh, we need this more than ever um, for obvious reasons, you know, the pandemic. And we have a lot of ailing Americans that aren't able to get the health care they need at this time. Uh, so this is really important for them to be covered. So I hope the city council can support AP 1400. And last but not least, I wanted to talk about um, COVID-19 and uh, the, some of the numbers we reported today at around one o'clock. Uh, we have uh, a lot of cases in Morro Bay um, and we are shattered. We sh just shattered a new record for our seven day average uh, countywide. And so what does that mean? That means that more people are getting tested, which is good. Uh, more people are getting infected with, with COVID, which is bad. Uh, more, more people in this county are getting infected with the Omicron variant, which is uh, generally considered to be a more milder symptoms for people who are vaccinated and boosted. So I encourage uh, residents to get vaccinated and boosted. And what I would like to see from the city of Morro Bay is, in, in, you know, in in addition to the short videos of vignettes that um, Mayor Heading has proposed, I'd like to see Mayor Heading do a Facebook Live Q and A, um, so that residents can participate in the conversation about COVID, ask questions, and as a medical professional, he could easily answer those questions. Uh, whereas someone like me, who is not a medical professional, can't do that. So I'm looking forward to seeing additional discourse from the city of Morro Bay on COVID-19 information. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Um, James, next public comment, please. Uh, next person raising their hand is Betty Winholtz. Betty. Okay. Welcome, Betty. Good evening, this is Betty Winholtz. Um, I have three comments about this evening. Um, one has to do with um, public comment now being back online before the city council meetings. Um, I did not know that was going to happen, so my comments did not come to you ahead of time. And so I'm wondering if you could have the city attorney speak to what the new rule is, if it's the same as the old, and or if it's different and how it's different. I understand it did go out to people who are on your list to get noticed, but I don't think it was on your front page of your website so the rest of us would know about it and so maybe that's something you could do in the future regarding uh, an item similar to this um, second um, the bike path has had uh, several different signs on it in terms of how long it's going to be closed i remember in december uh, it said it was going to be closed for a year and then it was posted, I think, last week. It would be closed only for six months. And then this week, it's been posted for, uh, I think, till August. So I uh, don't know if there's any definitive timeline on that. Uh, would appreciate some information. And then my last and third comment is, um, is there a third landslide happening at the WRF site? Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Um, James, next public comment. Uh, next public comment is Linda Winters. Okay, welcome, Linda. Uh, thank you, Linda Winters. Yes, Linda. Linda, are you there? Linda. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, Linda Winters here, aka um, Mobile Home Linda, and um, I'm here tonight to make an announcement about our, I don't know if he was the oldest, uh, 
um, mobile home resident, but he was certainly here for a very, very long time, 40 years. Um, uh, resident George Oberlin, uh, sad to say, he passed away on September 16th um, at the ripe old age of 97 years old. And um, the reason why uh, we... We are so honoring George. Is he? Uh, he was a prime example of why um, the rent control ordinance really, really is vitally important for the residents here in the mobile home parks. George lived in and was a, a mobile home resident for 40 years. And in the last three years, we had to work very hard to continue to um, make certain that that permanent residency was established and stayed intact. Um, he made it for three, four years. and. A month before he passed, he had decided to put his unit up for sale, which he did. And um, we would like very much to praise the city of Morro Bay for um, keeping the rent control ordinance intact. And I just had spent the last three days down in Long Beach because the family invited me to come be a part of his memorial service at the Riverside uh, National Cemetery, which was an incredible honor. And um, George was a forever um, Marine and a World War II vet. So I, I got to be a part of that. And the family wanted to be sure that I would thank the city of Morro Bay for all that they did, all that you did in keeping um, George to be a permanent resident. And he will be sorely missed and truly a treasure. I think maybe some of you might remember his time at a city council meeting when he was telling his World War II stories. Um, thank heavens we had a three minute limit. He'd still be talking. Uh, okay, that's all for now and um, I will be talking to you later at the next city council meeting thank you thank you linda um, james next public comment all right this is our last hand and we have uh melanie mahan okay welcome melanie hi um it's melanie mahan um and i just i have some questions um i'm wondering why we had a resolution about reproductive freedom i wonder if we had lots of women running around here that can't get access to birth control or abortion i mean are there pregnant women here that aren't free to do what it's best for them this smells like an attention getting campaign stunt and or a distraction i looked at some of the agenda correspondence today and the distraction worked. Congratulations on spending our tax dollars on a useless resolution just to make your lot, you, you look better to the voters. Again, I question the need. We live in the, one of the most liberal states in the nation. Gavin Newsom already put out a proclamation on this, so why the redundancy? We have a major public works project that is sliding downhill. While I know you all hope to get this built before your terms are up, but not only are you doubling down on this sewer mess, you're destroying our businesses and our roads and trying to bring in more slide zone property with the panorama lots. Who is going to take responsibility for all this mess? Are we being fined? And if not, where's the proof that we aren't? You've always said staff pay raises should align with the rest of the county. This pay raise gives you more money than most small cities in our county. Um, and as insurance in this package, um, with everything that's wrong in this town, the fact that you all want to pad your pay is a slap in the face to the harbor. If anyone needs additional monies, it's them. You all allowed this harbor fund depletion, allowed this train wreck of a sewer, and keep planning badly. So yeah, let's spend money on you, this useless proclamation, and annex some more slippery slopes into this little town. Just so you know, you've diverted a sewer leakage problem from the Pacific Ocean to our little estuary. Everything that slides down that hill will now devastate one of our biggest assets. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. James, uh, next public comment, please. We have no more hands raised, and you should be good to go forward. Oh, wait. Thank you, James. Um, we have a hand raised from Andrea Kamelik, I believe. Okay. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes, welcome, Andrea. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, dear Mayor, dear Council Members, I have a comment to Agenda Item A9, which is the adoption of the Reproductive Freedom Resolution. And I am here today to support the resolution, affirming the moral based support of reproductive freedom. And I very much hope that other cities on the Central Coast and the San Luis Obispo County Board of Supervisors will follow your lead. It is time to stop putting women and their needs last. Women's rights to decide their own health, safety, and privacy need to be respected and protected. Sexual and reproductive health and care are foundational for gender equality. They're also critical in achieving full recovery from the economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've seen a sharp decrease in women participating in the workforce. We've seen an increase in gender-based and domestic violence. Now we're seeing growing hurdles to access essential reproductive health care. All of this is hitting disadvantaged communities the hardest. The United Nations Human Rights Office of the High Commissioner states that the right of a woman or girl to make autonomous decisions about her own body and reproductive function is at the core of her basic rights to equality, privacy, and bodily autonomy. We have seen with the Texas Senate Bill 8, which has roots in a small town of Wascom, that no legislature is too small or powerless to enact or effect change. With that, I encourage you to approve a resolution that protects the constitutional rights and affirms the commitment of Morro Bay to be a welcoming, inclusive, and safe community for everyone. Um, it is not given that these rights are not going to be taken away, whether it is California or anywhere else. We have heard from women in our community who had struggled to access um, um, the healthcare services that they needed, including abortion, even here on the Central Coast. I hope that you will lead way in this and that you will approve the, this resolution. And I want to thank you very much for taking it on. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, James, do we have any other public comments, sir? Uh, nope. Looks like all the hands are now down, so you should be good to go. Okay. Thank you so much. With that, I will close general public comment and bring it back to council. And um, just a couple of questions to answer. Chris, do you have an update on the policy um, regarding the 72-hour rule, etc.? Emails. Chris, are you with us? Chris, you're muted. Can't hear you. Okay, Chris, I'll come back to you. Um, could I get a report on the bike path closure dates uh, from um, either Mr. Qualic or Mr. Collins? Thank you, Mayor. I'll jump in on that and I'll, I'll try to keep it short, but we do have a sign uh, out on the bike path that states that the bike path will reopen on September 30th of this year. Uh, that indeed is, is an extended time frame from what was originally posted, uh, as the Mayor and City Council know. Um, there have been some delays uh, with the conveyance project line, particularly due to the SHPO concerns in that area. And so in order for us to protect uh, valuable archaeological resources uh, that we know are along that conveyance alignment, uh, we do have a, a, a delayed and much longer process by which uh, some of the construction work uh, must take place. Uh, and that, that, that does involve extensive monitoring. Um, by tribal monitors. Uh, and so because of those delays, uh, the, the bike path won't be open as soon as we would like. Do you want to handle, well, I've got you the, was there a third landslide at the site, WRF site? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, that's the first I'm hearing of that. Okay. Thank you for that. Chris, are you with us? Uh, can you hear me, Mayor? Yes, we can. Thanks. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, apologize for the Zoom difficulty there. No worries. Um, so in regards to the city's compliance with the Sierra Watch case, um, staff has been reviewing a number of options to make sure that the city is in compliance with uh, Government Code 54957.5, um, which basically found uh, Plaster County in violation of the law with how they were handling agenda correspondence. 
Uh, my understanding from talking to staff is that uh, either a policy will be brought to council or a uh, city manager will be approving one. Um, until that written policy is actually adopted, um, staff decided in the meantime that uh, we could comply with that case by posting uh, agenda correspondence online while taking other measures as well. So to make sure that we move this along as quickly as possible, uh, agenda correspondence that was sent pursuant to the agenda listing to council at Morro Bay um, CA.gov was posted online today. And uh, I believe there were over 20 agenda items uh, correspondence that were posted online. Um, so as we continue to um, finalize a policy for final approval to make sure the city isn't exposed to liability, in the meantime, uh, we made a decision to go ahead and in the interim uh, publish over 20 pieces today. Um, and I believe that the way it was published and through other measures the city took, uh, we are in compliance while we're working on a written policy. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that update. That brings us to our consent agenda. This is uh, items A1 through A11. And uh, I'll go ahead and open general public comment for the consent agenda items only. A, again, A1 through A11. And uh, James, do we have any public comment? Uh, yes, we have two hands raised. First one from Betty Winholtz. Okay. Welcome, Betty. Are you with us, Betty? Betty? All right, James, uh, if we could come back to Betty, if she can get in, can we go to our next public comment? How's it going, Mr. Mayor? This is Highland with AGP. Um, Betty appears to now be unmuted. Okay. Betty, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? And now, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Um, there's uh, several items I want to comment on, so I'll try to talk fast, but there's many questions. Um, on item two, which has to do uh, with the money of, uh, that's being reviewed, I'm wondering why there, why there is $237,000 that have not yet been spent on the street money. And then if you could clarify what the half a million dollars is for um, the council chambers expenditure and could uh, my real question here is what is the council chamber is it the building uh, of the vets hall where we hold normal meetings or is it the room in the city uh, hall uh, which one of these are you defining as the council chambers um, I'm also wondering still on a2 why uh, there's a lot of money being um, uh, street money being spent on ADA instead of on the streets um, I'm wondering if the storm drain money or concern is related to the the um, sewer plant uh, project or is that a separate item um, and can there be some more specificity about what the money is being spent for quote implementing the housing uh, projects from the general plan Moving on to item A3, this is about your salary increase. I totally support you having an increase of $100 to $150. I do not support that you would increase it uh, beyond that. I think it's out of character with the other cities. And as you do with all other um, employees with the city, you tend to want to be in the median and not be above or beyond. And this really puts you head and shoulders above uh, where other cities are with their city council. Uh, stipends and the mayor stipends and I encourage you to reduce those um, regarding item a7 um, could you clarify that with this increase should we get this uh, grant that the two engines will now be sent out separately rather than together because of the number of people that uh, will be on each uh, engine and then is there an exit plan for in three years when this grant uh, ends. And then item A10, um, is our current IT person full-time? Um, because the ang language was used that when he's unavailable. And so are we adding a full-time person to a part-time person or will this be a second 
full-time person. And then A11, just real quickly, coming back to what the CFAC was saying, it sounds to me like they need to be allowed to meet in March to do review that would be pertinent as recommendations to the city council. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Highlander James, next public comment on consent. All right, next hand raised is Christian Alonzo. Okay, welcome Christian. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, my name is Christian Alonso, and I'm the Director of Public Affairs for Planned Parenthood Central Coast Action Fund. <clears throat> Our organization's mission is to expand access to quality reproductive health care for all, including safe and legal abortion through community education, public policy initiatives, and support for champions of this work. We believe that every citizen in our community should have the freedom and power to make their own decisions about their bodies, their lives, and their futures. Uh, and we also know that uh, bills like the Texas's uh, Senate Bill 8 started at the city level. So it is really reassuring to know that the Moro Bay City Council is acting to affirm reproductive freedom. And we thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next public comment. I don't see any more hands raised, so you guys should be good to go. Okay, James, thank you. We'll close public comment for our consent agenda and ask um, council if there are any items to pull, any items you wish to pull. There, I have my hand up. I don't know if you see it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, um, let me look, Jeff. I'm just trying to, it doesn't seem to be. Working, but anyway, uh, go ahead, sir. This is turn off. There it is. I found you on the very yeah. top. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like to, the mayor would like to pull A9 and A10. A9 and A10. Okay. And if you like, yeah. I'd like to move approval of uh, A1 through 9, excuse me, A1 through 8 and A11. Okay. We do have a motion for approval of all but A9 and 10. Is there second. a second for that? Okay, second, second. By Council Member Addis. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote, please, on those items. Council Member Addis? Yes. Council Member Ford? Yes. Council Member Heller? Yes. Council Member Barton? Council Member Barton, I believe you're muted. You're, you're muted, Laurel. <laughs> there you yes. go. Okay. Thank you. And Mayor Heading. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Councilmember Hiller, thank you. Councilmember Hiller, A9 first, please. All right, thank you, Mayor. So my question's about this, and obviously there have been a lot of correspondence about this, but you know, I've been on the council a little over three years. I've never asked for anything to be put on the consent agenda. In my understanding, the consent agenda uh, is typically for things that are routine and non-controversial. So I'm wondering with respect to A9 specifically, what is the process that led to this being on the consent agenda? Because it seems both controversial, not routine to me. So I wonder if our city manager or city attorney could address that question. Okay. Um, so some reason my video is not starting. There it goes. So, yeah, I'm not aware of a specific policy that directs that. But um, you know, this this item was brought forward because there was appeared to be consensus from the council members to that it be brought forward a future agenda item. So we placed it on there. It's about an hour's worth of staff time to put this together. Pretty straightforward. But uh, certainly, any item that's on consent can be pulled by council members for discussion. Right. Um, so you said it's by consent of the council, majority of council members. This it was a future agenda item that was brought up, I believe, several months ago. Um, I believe four out of five council members uh, supported it, and it became agendized as a result of that. Okay, so um, my other question is, I know in setting goals and so forth, we polled the public extensively about what was important to them. Did this issue, uh, how many votes did this issue get from the, those surveys that this be addressed? Um, none that I'm aware of. 
Okay. Um, reproductive freedom is an extremely broad term, and it means different things to different people. Um, we've got a lot of correspondence on this issue. Some of the correspondence have been from people who don't live in Morro Bay, uh, which is fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I got one letter that I'd like to just briefly address. It's from John and Gil Martin, which uh, completely express my opinions on this. Um, and they say, basically, consent agenda is intended, and I believe this is true for Rosenberg's rule of order and everything I learned from League of California Cities when I first became a council member and every, uh, every board meeting or, or other meeting that I attend, consent agendas are routine and non-controversial and they're typically administrative actions uh, that are not pulled and not voted on. So abortion, this is John's words, abortion is one of the most controversial issues in the country if the council tables this item, we expect it will not appear again on the consent agenda. Second, the city of Morro Bay provides municipal services, but it does not provide reproductive health services. The city has no role in this issue and the city council has no authority in this realm. Um, fourth, the city's resources should not be expended on issues for which the city council has no authority. Spending time on issues that are outside of the council's authority uses resources that could be better spent to further the city's mission to provide municipal services. Fifth, reproductive rights, however they define to be, are, issue, are issues for the federal and state government and courts to determine, not for the city council. This resolution needlessly creates division between people in the city of Morro Bay in these divisive times. Shouldn't the city council focus on statements that bring us together rather than tear us apart. For these reasons, we respect, respectfully request that you vote no on resolution 822. And I support those comments. This, I don't understand that, you know, I mean, can I call the city manager and get something on consent agenda? Uh, you know, I don't remember us addressing. No, this is a future agenda item. Um, you can go back and I'd be happy to send you the minutes. Um, I believe four out of five council members agreed to put it on as a future uh, agenda item and thusly it was agendized. Okay, well, I would appreciate it. You can bring things up, and when you have a majority of support for agenda items, those will be brought forward. Okay, so is this just time for questions right now, Mayor? Yes. Can I, make, can I make a comment? You can make a comment if you want to, sure. You've already made several, but go ahead. Okay, well, I might as well make a couple more. I think this is completely inappropriate for this council to be addressing global issues. We have no abortion clinic here. We have no hospital. I have no knowledge of anyone not getting the health care that they need. I don't understand why we would do a resolution like this. It's a very controversial issue. My sister, who was passed out, but I loved dear, dearly, was pro-life. And I still loved her, even though I am not pro-life. This is very controversial, and I don't know why the city is wading into this. We have no authority over it. We have no authority of the laws that are passed in Texas or other states. This is just, it looks like somebody running for office trying to score points, frankly. That's all I have. That's your opinion. Thank you. Appreciate that it. That's my opinion. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilmember Addis. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move approval of A9. Okay. A motion for approval of A9. Is there a second? Second. I'll second that. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Is it, was that Laurel first there? So a second by council member barton i believe yes okay we have a motion and a second any further discussion hearing none i'll take a roll call vote please council member addis yes council member ford yes council member heller no council member barton yes and mayor heading yes motion carries four one council member heller eight ten sir Yes, my questions about this are, and Scott Collins, maybe you can refresh my memory on this. Management partners study uh, is referenced here, increasing needs and re recommending uh, completing an IT needs assessment, strategic plan, et cetera. Have we retained management partners? And honestly, I forget whether they have reviewed our, all of our operations or if they were retained just to look at IT. Can you tell me what, what they're tasked with? Yeah, they, they performed a management study back in 2015, I believe, and 
issued recommendations. They also provided us the 10 year forecast model that we've used since then. And we probably are moving in a different direction, but that model served us well for the time being and management partners, this wasn't under my purview. And I don't believe one of the council members who, who's still here uh, was part of that, but uh, they did do a, a comprehensive look at all the city's departments. And we do reference back to it uh, on some occasions. Some things were brought forward and council moved forward with them and other things didn't, did not receive uh, additional attention, but they are currently not retained by the city. Okay, council member Heller, I can comment too. I think I'm the only council member that might have been here um, when management partners came through. Actually, I think it was my first year um, of elected the city um, had decided again prior to me uh, coming on board to have management partners do a general evaluation for opportunities for improvement or deficiencies in city operations. It was a broad based management review across the board of all areas, including both enterprise funds as well as the general city. They made a large number of recommendations, many of which were incorporated over the years into the city uh, objectives and goals. And the reference to this uh, specific uh, review was the review of the IT department, which, which again was just one department of all departments that were reviewed. In addition to that, they created the 10-year plan that you've seen um, annually through our budget process. Um, which we've talked about uh, and is now probably outdated and will be updated, but they were the uh, uh, purveyors of that plan as well. Okay, thank you for that. I'm glad yeah, that, uh, sure. I wasn't here for or I wasn't paying. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, so the other question I have, uh, Scott, is, you know, I don't know what percentage Morro Bay spends on IT, and it's a good question. Do we have one full-time IT person, or do we just have the consultant, or who's who's handling IT right now? So right now we have one position, and then we have a small contract uh, that supports that. So uh, I know uh, Ms. Johnson-Rios provided a staff report that kind of elaborates on the comparisons to our other uh, cities in the county um, that, that sort of talk about the FT, FTEs um, in comparison to their total uh, FTE count. Um, and I think we're kind of at the bottom end, uh, not that you use comparisons to say, okay, we get in the middle and that's perfect. Um, each context is slightly different. Um, we do have a lot more systems in most cities of our size because we do have a harbor, we do have water and sewer enterprises and other a variety of funds that we need to support um off-site police support harbor uh support um so there, there there's a wide variety of needs and there's also emerging needs that um, have become more more prevalent uh shall we say without getting into the details that need some immediate attention and having one person focused primarily on hardware uh it's hard to get to more strategic initiatives um especially if we're trying to move with, with the pace of time and people moving more and more online, um, the city needs to make that move as well. And so uh, this additional position would, would help us get there. Um, and also help us look kind of the long-term needs and conduct that IT assessment that we've been hoping to do for some time. Okay. I, I personally don't have a problem with the position, but I am kind of concerned at the approximately $70,000 for an assessment and IT strategic plan. Is that where did that number come from? Have you gotten proposals for this work or why do you think it'll cost so much? Uh, just a, it was conducted, uh, the number was put together by our former finance director, interim finance director, Katie Lichtig, but it was really just sort of uh, a guess as to what it would cost. Um, we didn't have somebody in IT that actually could lead that effort. Um, and so we're, we're hoping that by adding this position that that'll help us oversee that effort. It may cost less than that, quite honestly, Councilmember Heller, but that was sort of a guess based on what we'd heard from other colleagues. And are you going to put an RFP out on this? That is a good question. I, I, I defer to Ms. Johnson-Rios for that one. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, yes, we would plan to put an RFP out for that. And as the city manager indicated, part of the challenge has been um, not having staff capacity to actually manage and oversee that process. So um, that's certainly not a primary reason for this position, but it would be um, a benefit because it would allow the city to continue to carry forward um, proactive IT strategic planning 
and the current one FTE, um, as you can imagine with 100 FTEs citywide is largely reactive and responding to individual hardware requests and server updates and things of, of a more routine nature. Okay, and then does our current budget uh, have the funding for this additional position and also for the uh, whatever the uh, uh, strategic plan and uh, assessment of the infrastructure going to cost? Is that all budgeted for? Um, so our um, plan for this current fiscal year would be to focus on bringing a second IT person on board. And because the $75,000 was already appropriated in fiscal year 21-22, um, we wouldn't need to add any additional budget to the IT fund to accommodate a few months of the position in 21-22. We would then um, reassess the for the 22-23 budget and would likely um, add the IT assessment budget in 22-23 when we had staff that could um, can manage that process. Okay, uh, those are the questions. And if I if I may make a comment, this is another consent item that, for different reasons, I think should probably be a business item or something that's discussed because of the dollars involved. Um, frankly, I think it would would have been good to to put it on that uh, agenda section as as opposed to consent, but. Uh, in general, based on what you've said, uh, I, you know, I support this, but I definitely would like to see an RFP uh, uh, for the uh, strategic plan and assessment of infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Heller. I'll make a motion uh, to approve A10. Second. Motion by Mayor Heading, second by Council Member Addis to approve A10. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Council Member Addis. Yes. Council Member Ford? Yes. Council Member Heller? Yes. Council Member Barton? Yes. And Mayor Heading? Yes. Motion <clears throat> carries 5 0. Great, thank you. Um, that brings us to our business items for the evening. Our first business item is C 1. This is the Police Records Management System Agreement with Mark 43 Incorporated. And I believe I'm turning it over to Chief Cox and or perhaps other staff members. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'll, uh, welcome, I'll start Chief. off. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Yes, thank, thank you, Mayor uh, and Council members uh, for the opportunity to, to bring this item forward. Uh, this item is to replace the police department's current records management system in order to meet the current legislative compliance mandates uh, that require us to transition from the old uniform crime reporting system uh, into the new California incident-based reporting system. Uh, there are some further details outlined in the staff report uh, that you have. And our department, uh, police department support services manager, Bonnie Johnson, has done just a tremendous amount of, of work and research uh, on this project and has prepared a brief presentation that she's going to share with you uh, momentarily. Uh, at the end of that presentation, uh, myself, uh, Ms. Johnson, and a representative from Mark 43, uh, Ms. Deza Colbank, will be available to answer any questions that you might have uh, relating to either the staff report and or the presentation. And I also want to just real quickly uh, give a shout out thank you to our assistant city manager, Sarah Johnson Rios, and our city attorney, Chris Newmeyer, and his team. Uh, for all their work and assistance in uh, getting this project to this point. It's been a, a lot of work over a very long time, so we appreciate the, the help that we've had in doing that. And with that, I'll turn it over to our support services manager, Bonnie Johnson, uh, for the presentation. Good evening, uh, Mayor Heading and Council Members. I uh, think want to thank you for the opportunity to present you with our request for a new uh, report management system. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Pardon me if it takes a moment uh, for my presentation to get loaded. It takes a few, few moments. And I apologize if my dog finally decides at this exact moment that she is in desperate need of a walk. <laughs> That's a potential for us this evening. So, um, here, how am I going to? It's a good 
good thing we're getting that new IT guy because my uh, <laughs> my department out laptop is <laughs> needing some assistance. So. Might be better for uh, this if I just go in small screen here. So the police uh, records management system, also known as RMS, is a essential uh, software need and core function for Morro Bay Police Department as well as all law enforcement agencies to report crimes. Uh, traffic collision reports, citations, permits, to log property and evidence and statistical information. That information is, statistical information is used to give to uh, department heads, city staff, you folks, as well as report nationally and at the state level. Our current RMS system uh, is not reliable, nor does it support the new current requirements by DOJ for the uh, crime reporting, as Chief Cox mentioned, the cybers reporting. Um, it does not meet those minimum requirements of that uh, statistical reporting. Uh, with the exception of one agency, all agencies in San Luis Obispo County operate under the current or the same RMS system. So back in about 2017 or 18, the Sheriff's Department, along with five of the uh, county agencies, started uh, with demos and presentations from other RMS systems to look at going to a, a, a new one that met the needs of each of the departments. Uh, the Sheriff's Department and local agencies were given a proposal by a company with consortium rates so that we could all share data and make sure that it, um, we were able to communicate properly with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, the Sheriff's Department started the implementation process with that particular vendor and was looking at completing their uh, RMS system uh, conversion in spring of 2021, at which time we were going to go ahead and merge to that new system at that same time. But in July of 2021, after doing a little bit more research, we found that it was probably not in our best interest to proceed with that particular vendor, along with uh, the Sheriff's Department and the other area agencies found the same information. And so we've all kind of stepped away from that vendor. So in August 20 of 21, we decided to start doing demos with other agencies of vendors with RMS systems. And then in September of 2021, we developed and issued an RFP out nationally um, for any record management system. During that time, we received six proposals from different uh, uh, RMS systems. We rated all six of those and we invited two back for demos, um, which several of the other agencies within our county attended those demos, again, to kind of go with the same idea as we had in 2017-18. In November of 2021, we checked references with multiple agencies that use those systems that we received references from, and we began having meetings um, and negotiations with a few of the vendors. Some of the new features that we were looking for with a new RMS system was number one, that they were cybers compliant, which as Chief Cox said, is the California incident-based reporting system that the DOJ uh, made as a requirement for all of us to start reporting in January of 2021. So last year, we were supposed to start reporting in that uh, manner um, but our current RMS system, as stated before, does not support that reporting system. There's actually a couple agencies in our county who paid for the upgrade with our current system to be able to report uh, cybers, and it's pretty much crashes the system, and they're having to hand count their stats. So that was quickly decided that that was not going to be in our best interest to just pay to do the upgrade with our current vendor. We also needed the RMS system to integrate with the CAD and dispatch center as our dispatches through the sheriff's department. Um, we needed it to integrate with the DA's office and courts 
Um, we needed for it to have an error detection and an intuitive design. The error detection, basically, for the cybers compliant reports, we have to be within a certain uh, ratio of error with our monthly reports. And so we needed the system to be able to have that error detection. We needed a workflow device that would uh, help with the analytics and the reporting. And we were looking for a simplified customization um, platform that we could uh, have different forms with all the new laws and regulations that are coming out. We're constantly having to create new forms to uh, inform people. Um, we needed a system that had redundancy and security for innovation. And we needed it also to have a property and evidence module to track all the property and evidence that we take in. We also had a strong desire for um, the officers to be able to start the reports out in the field, which saves time and cost savings for the officers, the department, and the city. So our search, we narrowed it down to two vendors of our choice, one vendor being Sunridge. Um, they are a server-based uh, module. They were offering a 10-year contract with the initial cost for implementation at $370,367. Their annual software maintenance and support started at $27,888 for year one, but then incrementally uh, went up each year um, to where we would be paying $40,000 at year 10 for the software maintenance and support for a total cost of $665,545. Plus, we would have to purchase a new server to meet the minimum requirements that the server is required to have when hosting this kind of a, a software. So Mark 43 was a cloud, uh, is a cloud-based system, and um, that is what our IET department had recommended for us, was that we go with a cloud-based system. Um, it has the redundancy and the security that we were requesting. They offer a five-year contract and with the implementation and startup cost being $173,500. And their annual software and maintenance support is $26,500 a year. And that cost is uh, stays the same for those five years. At the end of the five years, we can do an automatic renewal <coughs> with them with a total cost of $279,500. So as stated uh, earlier in the presentation, uh, in 2017-18, we had uh, chosen a vendor that was in line with all the other agencies. And so when Ms. Johnson-Rios uh, arrived at the city, we and we were talking about the budget for 21-22, we had <clears throat> informed her that we were going to be needing to purchase a new RMS system and the quote for the previous RMS vendor was 109000 to get started and so we had already set aside those funds in the budget to pay for that uh, upgrade and implementation. Since we have decided to step away from them and the new cost being uh, start up 173,500 we're requesting that we will need an additional $64,000 in, in the budget for appropriation. <clears throat> in the subsequent four years ongoing, um, after this year for 22-23, the annual cost will be the $26,500. So if directed, the count, uh, staff will return to council with a item agenda asking to uh, for the budget adjustment in the 21-22 to utilize the measures money for that additional $64,050 to go ahead and proceed with this RMS upgrade. And uh, we're available for any questions if you have. Thank you, Bonnie. Appreciate that. And thank you, Chief, um, for your comments. If we could take the screen down. I'll go ahead. Yeah, great. Um, let me start with just a couple of questions, Bonnie or Chief. Um, I'm, I'm wondering why um, it doesn't say specifically in the staff report, or, or unless I didn't um, find it um, when I read it, but um, why did we move away from the slow uh, sheriff's department process? Um, it says that in 2017, um, 
that agency and five other local agencies started a process of procuring, and it, then it, it conclude, you concluded in 2021 to step away. What were the issues um, that brought you to that conclusion? Um, without giving you know other agencies information, uh, you know in a in a public manner, uh, it was. It was discovered that there was some minimum requirements of that company that didn't meet our minimum requirements. Um, and so to get out through those hurdles would take be very time consuming and uh, they didn't appear to be as reliable as they had initially forecasted themselves to be. So we just didn't feel it was ultimately the best decision for us. Did they not, did the system not meet the state mandate? No, they did not. Did they're, not they're not DOJ compliant. Uh, for the, ma the main item was that they're not DOK DOJ compliant at this time. So they, I'm just curious. So it appears like other cities went ahead and purchased a system that didn't meet the needs of the state mandate? No, nobody ended up purchasing them. Uh, okay. as, to my knowledge, there is no California agency that is using that current RMS system. Okay. They, uh, so California had, so there's a national incident-based reporting system, but California has a few extra little special things that they want reported. And so California has their own uh, national reporting incident. So that company is nationally uh, reporting appropriately, but they don't fall within the California guidelines of what they require. So that's the biggest reason that most of the agencies stepped away from their contract with that. Okay, good. That helps. Yeah. This will um, make us fully. Com this will allow us to be fully compliant with yes. not only DOG, DOJ, but the legislated mandates. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And I actually attended a records. Uh, uh, webinar, a uh, records reporting webinar, and that company who's based out of Florida said that Mark 43 is the best in the industry for the reporting system. Okay. That's the requirement. Um, and then um, my next question is, do we have the IT staff, we just had a discussion on an IT item on our agenda tonight. Do we have the IT staff um, that's capable internally of implementing and or managing the system? Because it is a cloud-based system, there's really not a whole lot that goes into that. There's no, it's not server-based, and so the IT staff is not really involved in that. Um, the support and maintenance that we pay for annually kind of falls into that. Got it. Th I was just, yes, thanks. I was curious because um, I know from the previous presentation that um, we're we're light on um, IT um, staff and wanted to make sure we could handle this this proposal. So again, from a fiscal um, standpoint, um, our current budget is one hundred and nine four fifty uh, for this system that we had budgeted for a system and. Um, uh, the cost for the fiscal year is actually going to be 173.5. So you're going to be coming back with a mid-year adjustment. Is that what we're going to be expecting yes. on this? And do, do we have an idea presently on what the sources of funds might be? I, know I would probably defer that to Ms. Rios or Johnson Rios. Okay. Yes, um, Mayor. Um, we would include this in the mid-year budget presentation for both CPAC and Council, which will come before both bodies in February. And since the original project was budgeted and approved in Measure Q&E, um, staff's recommendation would be to add the increased budget amount also in Measure Q&E. And as you heard, there there is funding available uh, for that, so that would be part of our staff report in February. Okay, great. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Councilmember Heller, I see your hand, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Bonnie, thank you for the presentation. You're one of the people behind the scenes that does so much work for the police department. And I want to thank you for everything you do and any, everything you've done for many years for, for us in the city of Morro Bay. Really appreciate that. Uh, in looking at this proposal, do we need new equipment or is the equipment that we have going to work with this software that you're addressing here? The minimum requirements for the software are met with our current system. 
um, being cloud-based, um, and then with the computers, they've all they all the existing computers meet the minimum requirements of the software. Okay, and then when you talked about renewal possible or option to renew after five years, is that a renewal at the same rate that we're paying for the first five years, or is that going to be negotiated at that time, or how does that work? So it is uh, we can lock it in at this time that it would be a 5% increase. And so I actually did figure that up. It would be an additional uh, $1,325 a year, or excuse me, yeah, a year. So the annual maintenance cost would go to uh, 27825 at year six through 10. Okay. Uh, I mean, my thought about that is it seems reasonable, might be good to lock it in, but I'll leave that up to you and the chief and, and uh, city manager and so forth. Um, let's see, what else? Did you have a chance when you talked to other agencies that use this system to ask them about the service that Mark 43 provides? Yes, um, so I was going to go do a sit-in with Beaumont PD and Manhattan Beach PD, um, but COVID hit all of Right. Them, just like it did us and so they weren't uh, allowing outside guests in um the local state parks agency m merged over to uh, mark 43 mid-year last year and so i have spoke with them several times they've given me an example of a report and we've been communicating about me just going over and hanging out with them for a day and just seeing exactly how the system works um, but I reached out to at least 10 of their current vendors and gotten feedback from each of them. That's great. It's not like you've done your homework and that sure as you know, software as a service is great only if you get that service help when you need it quickly. Yeah. So it sounds like this outfit does that. So thank you again for your work on this and your, and your comments. That's all thank I have there. Thank you, Councilmember Hiller. Councilmember Ford, I see your hand, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, actually, Council Member Heller asked most of my questions, but um, I do have one remaining question. Uh, and, and Bonnie, thank you. Uh, and the Chief, also thank you for your hard work on this. And um, the report was quite comprehensive, um, so detailed. So great job. I uh, My question is, how long before you got this last, it, it, it says that you got the last, or you've had the current R, RMS system for nine years. And um, do you happen to know how long you had the previous system or did you only have one system before, or, before this one? Um, just curious, like how often it seems that you would have to change it out. Yeah, great question, because it's not something I, I'm looking forward to doing on a every five year basis. Um, so, Prior to our current system, the system before that was owned by the same company, but it went to a uh, more of a Windows-based platform. So it was more of a DOS-based platform before like the green screen, everything was just very simple and archaic. Um, so uh, in 2012, we had moved from that system to our current system, but it is with the same vendor. Um, that vendor has since been bought out by another vendor. And so they're not even the existing vendor that we've had all these years. So, Okay, so, um, you know, just somebody like me who's not nearly as informed as you are, Bonnie, how, how do you think with this new, um, with the new legislative requirements that are prompting this change in the RMS RMS system. Do you, um, just in your own experience, do you think that um, this is an expense that we will have to put forth um, again? You know, after this five years, or do you think? What are your feelings on the um, the Mark uh, is it forty five system, forty three system? Do you think that they'll be adaptable so that we can just renew with them and? Um, do you see where I'm going with this? Like, yes. I, yes. yeah. So you don't have to do all this work again. Um, how much faith do you have in the fact that they might be adaptable for those updates? I would say that's pretty much my driving force in doing all the research that I've done. So I don't want to do this again. Um, 
in speaking with the other agencies that I've spoken with, they seem to be very adaptive to their needs. Uh, one of the things that was appealing with Mark 43 was they will take customer feedback about the uh, customization fields that they need, et cetera. And then if they get enough departments asking for the same need, they'll put it out in a software update. And then um, one of the benefits of being a cloud-based system versus a server-based system is when they do those big updates it just it doesn't make your system go down you don't have the downtime that most systems have um when it's server-based um and so they are continually doing updates to keep ahead of schedule and ahead of the times um one of the new re reporting requirements that we started january 1st being ripa uh, Mark 43 is now also getting on board with being able to uh, report RIPA data as well. So they seem to be very uh, on top and proactive to the new laws and legislations that are out there. Um, I do forget off the top of my head um, how old the company is, but they do have a, a very good client base in California. So I believe that they are continually looking at California requirements and trying to be proactive with that information. That's great to hear. Thank you so much. And you know, and when I was looking at your two options, um, I, I I have to say that I I was pleased to see that you are going with the cloud based. So um, that's great. So thank you so much. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Councilmember Ford. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, um, I'll go ahead and open up public comment. This is public comment for item C-1 on our agenda. Public comment is now open. And James, do we have any public comments, sir? We have uh, one raised hand from Carol Truesdale. Okay. Welcome, Carol. Carol, can you hear us? I just got the sign to unmute. Thank you very okay, much, everybody. Sure. Welcome. I want to compliment our Morro Bay Police Department and all the research they've done in this uh, new pro new uh, reporting process. And I hope the council votes in favor of this. Our Morro Bay Police Department has been underpaid about 30% compared to other agencies. We spend a lot of money uh, training wonderful human beings and they, they stay with us for a while, but unfortunately, the uh, pay, pay raise is not significant enough to keep and support their families. So by adding this uh, expenditure, I think it's a wonderful idea because it makes their reporting process a lot easier, more streamlined, and um, I support the decision 150%. And I want to thank the Moore Bay Police Department for everything they do. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, James, next uh, public comment. Uh, got a hand raised from... Mestiza Colbank. Okay. Ms. Colbank, can you hear me? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Hi, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Really just want to, my, my name is Mestiza Colbank, actually with Mark 43. Uh, Mark 43 is excited for this opportunity to partner with the City of Morro Bay. We actually have over 60 agencies in California, including California Highway Patrol, California DOJ, California Parks and Recreation, other departments of all sizes. So we are uh, adding uh, the city to our growing customer list. Um, we, we actually have over 130 global agencies. So Mark 43 does offer a secure, flexible, and modern technology RMS platform that helps your police department focus on what matters most, and, and that is serving the community. So we are, and just as Bonnie mentioned, we are constantly innovating and updating our system at no cost as it relates to new laws, legislation, reform efforts, and transparency demands. So we truly believe our RMS platform will be the last system the city will need to procure. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure working with Bonnie and the chief and the commander. And, and again, truly just uh, on behalf of Mark 43, thank you again for allowing us the opportunity to serve, uh, serve you and serve the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Colbank. Um, James, uh, next public comment. <laughs> looks like we have no hands raised uh, so you should be good to go thanks so close public comment bring it back to council I'll um, 
reiterate what was said by a couple of council members. Um, Bonnie, very much appreciate the uh, excellent vetting of this system that you've done. And Chief, um, very much appreciate you and, and your leadership. Um, it's apparent to me that you've done your homework that this um, is not only a, a cost-effective approach to meeting legislated and DOJ requirements, but also uh, hopefully will, as Ms. Truesdale said, provide some um, improvement in operations that will um, lessen the load on our, our staff. And I'm hoping that's gonna be true. I especially um, appreciate uh, Council Member Ford's questioning regarding future adaptation and upgrades. I think it's very important to have a system that's amenable to change in the future so that we're not reacquiring this system, these systems every five years at high cost expenditures. And for all of those reasons, um, I will be supporting the recommendation and we'll move to um, uh, direct the city manager to execute a five-year agreement with Mark 43 to implement a new police records management system in an amount not to exceed $279,500 and return with the budget amendment at mid-year to appropriate $64,050 in additional measure CHU and E funds to fully fund implementation in fiscal year 21-22. I'll second. Like, oh. <laughs> a, may, a motion by Mayor Heading for the staff recommendations, seconded by Council Member Addis. Any further discussion? Here. I'll just add, Mayor, since yes. I didn't ask any questions. I just want to say thank you to Bonnie and thank you to Chief Cox, and I appreciate all the work you did on this. It's clear to me that it's something that's needed that's going to help our department, and that's been a long-time goal, I think, of Council is to continue to do what we need to do to make sure we have a fully funded, fully functioning department, and I appreciate your work on this. Thank you, Council Member Addis. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and take a roll call vote, please. Council Member Addis? Yes. Council Member Ford? Yes. Council Member Heller? Yes. Council Member Barton? Yes. And Mayor Heading? Yes. Motion carries by vote. Thank you. That brings us to our business item C 2. This is adoption of resolution number 11 22 authorizing the city manager to execute grant agreements if awarded with the California Department of Water Resources for water well infrastructure rehabilitation and installation project and two recycled water facilities project pursuant to the 2021 urban and multi-benefit drought relief program. And I believe I'm turning this over to Mr. Qualick, our esteemed public works director. Thank you very much, Mayor, and thank you, Council. Uh, we're very pleased to present uh, authorization for this grant tonight. Um, before I begin, I want to say this was done in collaboration with our project team on Corolla, as well as uh, with our consulting engineer, Daniel Heimel, uh, who is helping out with the transition of Bob Wyvick's retirement. And he's focusing um, his time on the work project as well as one water um, projects. And this, this grant was really put together in one week uh, when we learned of the deadline. Um, we really emptied out our schedules and uh, made sure that this was submitted uh, within that week. So it's something we're very proud of uh, because there is a lot of money at stake um, and some really good projects. So I'm going to give a very brief overview of the grant and the two projects involved, and um, then I'll take questions after. I also have Mr. Heimel uh, available for any technical questions. So the 2021 Urban and Multi-Benefit Drought Relief Program, uh, it offers financial assistance to address drought impacts through implementation of projects with multiple benefits. So some of those eligible projects include strengthening water supplies against drought-related loss and contamination, and addressing immediate drought impacts on human health and safety, protecting fish and wildlife, or other public benefits. Uh, eligible projects include hauled water, temporary community water tanks, bottled water, new wells, rehabilitation of existing wells, and other projects. And the city applied for two um, grants uh, for, for, for two projects. 
for the project is the water well infrastructure rehabilitation and install. And the second is recycled water facilities, which is essentially one of the components of our WARF program. Uh, the first project is the water well infrastructure rehabilitation installation project. So our current system, as, as, as many of you know, in, in the old DSAL building, we have a reverse osmosis system that we utilize to purify water coming um, out of our ground. Uh, that does experience loss uh, during the water treatment and purification process. That's that's totally normal. That all, all systems experience that. Um, but our, ours is not um, extremely efficient currently. Uh, and we also have some aging infrastructure, particularly with one of our extraction wells, which also results in water use inefficiencies um, and then also reliability issues with that well. So the overview of the project is we would rehab for the existing wells. Um, we'd make improvements to structural, mechanical, electrical, and instrumentation and controls assets. Uh, and we think that we can bring our water treatment efficiency up by 40% um, from its current level of efficiency and extend the life of the assets by 10 to 15 years. Um, we'd also install uh, two new extraction wells for increased capacity. Um, and the total project grant request for this one was $10,364,000. And then for the second project, uh, we applied for a grant. Um, it is our recycled water facility. So uh, currently, we, I'm sorry, not currently, sorry. Uh, indirect potable reuse system to help uh, the city supplement water supply, enhance water portfolio, and build drought resiliency. That's the, that's the purpose of the project. Um, our Morro Basin is susceptible to water intrusion due to decreasing groundwater levels. Um, those groundwater levels, of course, are coming down because of the drought um, and uh, overdraft issues. Um, the project includes construction of almost two miles of pipeline, four 90-foot deep injection wells, and supporting infrastructure and facilities. Uh, that's combined with parts of our conveyance project uh, for those keeping score. Um, initial estimates show up to 825 acre feet per year may be pumped into our groundwater from the wharf plant. And placement of injection wells could be utilized to create a barrier between gr our groundwater basin and the ocean to protect us against that seawater intrusion that contaminates our groundwater. Project will increase available volume of water supplies and protect the basin from further seawater intrusion. And for that one, we applied for ten million and seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Our current recycled water facility project, as a component of the Wharf program, um, I, I believe we have budgeted around six million. Um, so our grant request is above that because it would also uh, capture some cost recovery for the conveyance project. I did a quick and dirty uh, overview map here just to show you where our existing extraction wells are. We have the Flippo's well, the notorious Flippo's well by um, Lila Kaiser Park here. Uh, we have two right by the high school parking lot. I'm sorry, Greg, are we supposed to be seeing this? Oh, can, can you not? Uh, There's nothing. There's nothing on the screen. Sorry. How about, did you see the presentation from before? No. Oh, geez. <laughs> How about now? Uh, it's an e email. Okay. Uh, you don't want us to read, so I would not have your email. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. I, not that I read it. I just uh, okay. There it is again. Okay. I think uh, everyone I've spoken to today is having IT issues. Yeah. Um, no worries. Probably need that analyst. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. Nice. There, there you go. go. <laughs> There's the visual. All right. So anyway, I, pr I had prepared these wonderful slides, which uh, there, that's proof. There you are. Um, that. Okay. So here's the, uh, here's the map overview. So um, I mentioned that we have the Flippo's well um, right behind the, the Flippo's batting cages and by Lila Kaiser Park. Uh, we also have the two wells um, at the high school parking lot. And we have four wells along the bike path that we currently use. So... Um, right now, we're, we're currently evaluating through our uh, consultant GSI where the optimal locations of the um, injection wells will be. And so we do have some, some different options. Uh, we, could, we could put them closer to the ocean, uh, which would create a, that barrier that I mentioned earlier um, to protect our groundwater from seawater intrusion. Uh, there are some potential well sites um, on or around the Vista property. 
Um, and so those are all under consideration, but um, just want to give you that overview uh, so you had an idea of the locations we were talking about. Um, and then our, our recommendation uh, tonight is for city council to adopt the resolution um, in order to authorize the city manager to uh, enter uh, into an agreement with California Department of Water Resources should the city be awarded uh, grant funds for the two projects I described. Um, that concludes my presentation and I'll take any questions. Hey, thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I didn't catch your slides earlier. I, I was following the staff report as I read it, but when you talked about the visual, I said, uh-oh. <laughs> so thank you for that very much. No um, problem. Um, I just have one question. Um, boy, maybe it's not a, even a fair question, but um, what do you think the possibility of potentially getting a grant like this for the city of Morro Bay might be? I'm sure it's highly competitive. Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. We know that uh, the Department of Water Resources has around $300 million to allocate for these sorts of projects. And so that, that's a lot of money. Um, and so uh, that, that is one of the reasons we wanted to apply is, you know, we, we think our projects are, are, are very worthy of consideration for these grant funds. Uh, we, we have been affected by the drought um, in this community. And we are really relying on the state water project for water currently. And if we ever want to become more drought resilient, um, it's, it's, it's well known that we have to increase our water supply portfolio. And these projects help us do that. And you know, that is essentially our message to the state. Uh, so given that, that strong message and all the work that went into the project, uh, into the grant application a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, we're very hopeful. Um, I, I, I would hesitate to indulge in, in a percentage chance though. Right. Yeah. Well, and um, and may I ask, are there uh, is there a potential for partial award as well? There is a potential for partial award. Yes. And so uh, should should the uh, state come back with a partial award, we, we'd have to come back to council to decide whether or not to accept those funds. If you know, if we would be required to um, pony up for, for the rest of the funding for a given project or not, and whether or not that was a council priority. And my last question is the two hundred thousand dollar um administration um uh, contribution is self-imposed correct that's correct there was no match required but we wanted to show some skin in the game on this got it thank you uh great presentation and thanks for putting it together to, for you and dan and group and corolla in such a short period of time council member hello question sir yes thank you mayor and uh Thank you, Greg. Uh, I echo the mayor's comments on getting this together in a short timeline, which obviously is important when you're pursuing grant money. So thank you for your work on this and your report as well. Uh, so apparently there's two different parts to the two separate grants you're applying for, and they're both about $10 million. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Okay. And then the what is the you talk about the permitted withdrawals that the city has. What What is our permitted withdrawal from our current wells? And Will this impact the permit? Will we have to get a new permit to, if we expand how much we withdraw? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, I'm, I'm going to let Dan jump into the specifics of that. Yeah, uh, Councilmember Heller, members of, of the council. Yes, the uh, the current permit uh, that the city has with the State Water Resource Control Board for extractions in the Morro Basin allows for extracting 581 acre feet per year. Um, with the IPR project, it's envisioned that uh, additional water would be able to be injected into that basin, and and thus uh, would allow for extractions above and beyond the 581 acre feet per year. Um, that, however, would uh, likely require an amendment to the existing permit to account for the additional injection and extractions. So do you know what, how much we would typically withdraw um, from the wells in, in when we really needed the water the most? Are we anywhere near the 581 acre feet per year, or does, does anybody know? No, I, currently the city is only extracting uh, around 100 acre feet per year, I believe, oh, okay. uh, from the Morro Basin. Um, 
because as, as Greg described it, you know, it, it can rely or it has relied upon state water as the primary source of supply. But given concerns about the extended drought and the impacts on state water availability and also potential infrastructure failures uh, along the state water system, uh, the city would like to be prepared to be able to uh, more reliably rely on the Morrow Basin supplies. And so that's really the driver for improving the existing extraction well infrastructure, and then also enhancing the ability to recharge that basin through the IPR project. That's great. Um, the reverse osmosis treatment facility, our existing facility, is that adjacent to the existing sewer plant? It is, yes. It's actually directly adjacent to pump station A, but uh, as well as the existing uh, sewer plant. Okay, so you know we have future plans to demolish or decommission to demolish that plant. So I'm assuming this RO treatment facility would remain in place and remain functional. Is that fair to say? That is correct. Okay, and then part two, up to two more extraction wells. So this is above and beyond what's in the work project right now, or is this? I'm getting. We've got all these wells. I'm getting a little confused about. Uh, yeah, so the first project would be a rehab of uh, four existing wells and then the addition of two more extraction wells, which do go above and beyond what's envisioned for the wharf project. Okay, okay. Uh, and if we do get the grant money, does this mean we will not be using the our current loan uh, monies to pay for this part of the work and we'll have funds available for other purposes or... That's part of the intention. Obviously, we would need to evaluate it at the time if, if, if we receive the grant. Um, but that is part of the intention is to um, uh, retain some of those uh, funds that are available to us from the loan. Okay. Those are my questions. Thank you, Greg. And Dan, appreciate it very much. Thank you, Councilmember Hiller. Any other questions of Council? Seeing no hands, so I'll go ahead and open up public comment. This is public comment for item C-2 on the agenda. Public comment is now open. And uh, James, do we have any public comment, sir? I am seeing no raised hands, so you should be good to go. Okay, I will close public comment, bring it back to council and either entertain a motion or uh, further discussion. I'll move for approval. Okay. okay, motion by Councilmember Barton to approve staff recommendation, seconded by Councilmember Heller. Um, any further discussion? I do have a comment if I could, Mayor. Absolutely, yes. Uh, my only concern about this item is we need a new acronym. And the only one I can figure out is WWIRIP. <laughs> I'm looking for something shorter and something that makes sense that I can easily remember. So, Greg and Dan, to get work on that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. We'll get right I'll on that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Any other comments? All right, we'll go ahead and do a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Addis? Yes. Councilmember Ford? Yes. Councilmember Heller? Yes. Councilmember Barton? Yes. And Mayor Heading? Yes, so great work, staff. Uh, Dan, thank you. Uh, appreciate your involvement in this and Corolla's. Fingers crossed. It'd be gr a great to have a grant such as this. Okay, that brings us to item C 3. This is the establishment of a city council subcommittee to review and make recommendations for updates and revisions to the advisory body handbook and bylaws. And I believe I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Swanson, our city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. This item was um, brought forward at the request of council, council at the last meeting um, to establish a subcommittee that would conduct the biennial review of the um, advisory board handbook. And I will leave it to you to determine who those two members should be. Wow, I think that's the shortest staff report on record. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I will just, by virtue of history, tell you that I had the pleasure of working with uh, council member, former council member McPherson um, two years ago on this. This is uh, an every two year effort of just reviewing, as um, Dana was saying, um, our advisory uh, body handbook and bylaws. 
and then bringing any revisions back. Um, if you have questions of me about um, content or amount of time, I'd be happy to answer those. And I see Council Member Addis's hand up, please. I was actually hoping to nominate a couple people. Oh, okay. Is it not okay? Uh oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I I was hoping to nominate Council Member Barton and Mayor Heading uh, to do this, and I did ask Council Member Barton earlier um, if I could nominate her, and so now's the moment nice of day. now's the moment of truth. I see she turned her camera off. <laughs> but I think if the two of you were on it, Mayor, it would go pretty quickly since you know so much about it. I, I yeah, okay. Alrighty, thank you for your confidence in that. Um, I'll I'll listen to other comments. Okay, Councilmember Heller. Can you hear me? Hey, there we go. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this, uh, I didn't realize we did this every couple of years, which is, I know that you and Council Member McPherson spent a ton of time going through it last time. And I think, oh my gosh, someone, you know, two more people need to go through it again. Yeah. The, uh, my main concern is that it be streamlined and succinct, which is my message to everyone about everything. So, uh, as possible, and that we do all that we can to accommodate the comments that come to us from the advisory committees. And I know we have uh, liaisons, which I am for the planning commission, which I enjoy very much. But I oftentimes hear kind of comments or scuttlebutt on the street that. Well, I'm on this committee, but nobody ever listens to what I have to say. So whatever you can do or whoever volunteers <laughs> to be on this subcommittee to uh, ensure that there's something in the policy that gets the message to us, not that we're going to agree with all the comments or opinions, but there's a clear channel of communication for all of the advisory committees. So that's what I'm looking for. Good input. Thank you. Council Member Ford. Yes, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I I think that it's great to um, consider having someone who has previously been on this um, review panel um, and all, our subcommittee, and then also some new blood in there to look at it with a, a fresher eye, I guess I should say. Um, and so I love the idea of having Council Member Barton if she's willing to do it, and then Mayor Heading. I think you're it for the experienced person. <laughs> So <laughs> I don't know if you're willing, but, um, and then of course, you know, uh, mayor, if, if you absolutely can't fit it into your schedule, I I'm willing to do it as well. But, um, I, I love the idea of the, of the duo. You too. And thanks for your support. I, you know, um, uh, given the amount of time that actually was spent last time, which was rather significant, I do believe that council member Barton, um, with your fresh eyes and my um, old um, stale eyes, could um, could do this fairly expeditiously and and get council review um, fairly quickly. And so, thank you, Council Member Addis, for <laughs> your thoughtfulness in recommending me. And um, yeah, I'd be happy to do it uh, actually. So, and thank you all for your comments. Um, uh, we'll, we'll entertain a motion then, Council Member Addis, it sounds like. May I? I would like to uh, move. To yes, I'm sorry, Dana. Can we open oh. public comment, please? Oh, yeah, I should do public comment. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, thank you for reminding me. Public comment for item C-3 is now open. This is item C-3, public comment. And James, give it a minute. Do we have any comments? I see no hands raising, so we should be good to move forward. Okay, I will close public comment and bring it back for uh, recommendation. Council Member Addis, I believe. Thank you. I uh, would like to move to uh, um, to appoint Mayor Heading and Council Member Barton as the subcommittee to review the handbook, I think it is, or the policies on um, advisory board appointments. Yeah, advisory body handbook and bylaws. Thank you. The advisory body handbook. I don't have the language right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'll second it. Okay, a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing, hearing none. Um, I just can I just say oh, thank you. Oh sure, and, and, and thank, thank you. you. Yes. I'm, yeah, I'm, I really appreciate the two of you um, being willing to take on more hours 
um, to do this. So thank you. Uh, we didn't hear is is Council Member Barton amenable? <laughs> <I'm>, we're hoping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Good. Okay. Great. All right. We'll go ahead and do a roll call vote then. Council Member Addis. Yes, and I just want to slip in a thank you to both of you. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Council Member Ford. Yes. Council Member Heller. Yes. Council Member Barton. Yes. And Mayor Heading. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, thank you. That brings us to item D Council Declaration of um, Future Agenda Items. Um, any stuff? Council Member Heller. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd like to propose a future agenda item that, that asks the staff to bring back uh, a policy that clarifies uh, the content that's appropriate for consent agenda items. I am not clear about that, and I would like to uh, have staff come back with a policy that clarifies it. Yeah, personally, I'm clear. I'm I'm pretty clear with regard to what it means. I don't think I need a, a policy to guide that. Maybe you can explain it to me someday, okay? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, Jeff, I really am happy to sit down with you and chat about it if you'd like, but um, I don't I don't think you need a guiding policy for what goes on consent. Any consent item can be pulled at any time. I don't want to get into the discussion, but I won't be supporting it. Any, any other support for it? I'm just looking for, okay. Council Member Addis? Is, are you on this item or next? Next item, sorry, okay. when Council Member Heller is finished. Okay, so I'm, any other hands up for support of that item? Okay, not, okay. Council Member uh, yeah, I have, I have another oh, one. Oh, sorry, Jeff, you have another one? That's okay. I thought that the uh, suggestion, I think, by a member of the public, perhaps, that the folks are going out to the Kansas Avenue uh, uh, homeless location report back. I think that would be a great thing to hear hear about. So I'd like to see that agendized for a future meeting. Um, could we uh, maybe suggest that during council member reports that you give a report, or would you prefer it to be agendized as a formal um, discussion? Uh, you know, either one is fine with me, Mayor. Oh, good. Okay. Um, I think it was council member Barton and Ford are going. Would that be okay to bring it back? As council member report? I'm fine with that, Mayor and Council Member Heller. I, I'm fine to give that as part of the report. And, and, and I, you know, Council Member Barton as well. Um, we'll work on that together if, if you're cool with that, Council Member Barton. Yes. Great. We'd appreciate that. Yes. Let's let's, let's load up Laura tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, one last one then. <laughs> um, you know, lots going on in the harbor, and I always, in the back of my mind, I have a question about what is the responsibility of the Coast Guard? What is the responsibility of the Harbor Department? What is the responsibility of the Fire Department, Police Department, et cetera, in various emergencies and events that happen on and around the harbor? And I just keep thinking, you know, are we doing the most efficient thing? Is it appropriate for all agencies to respond? Is there, is there are there some guidelines uh, that uh, address what the harbor does and does not do, or perhaps look at how all of that is managed. So that's kind of a long way of getting getting to uh, uh, asking if, if the council members would support uh, a staff uh, an agenda item that would clarify those responsibilities and how that all works. Mayor, um, may I ask a question on this? Yeah, absolutely, please. Um, I believe I could be wrong. I believe that's covered in our emergency manual. So Scott, it, would be difficult, um, it would be difficult for me to support a full agenda item on this because I believe it's covered in the emergency response um, manual that the city has. Yeah, I mean, in regards to emergencies, like full scale emergencies, um, you know, we, we do have a plan that addresses. A multitude of different types of uh, incidents, like uh, a tsunami, for instance, or an earthquake, and whose roles and responsibilities there there are. Um, I believe the uh, management partners um, study that was mentioned in an earlier item this evening um, did look at the breakdown between harbor and coast guard. If I'm not 
mistaken, Mr. Anders B, are you available? But I, I believe they did some kind of breakdown on that, which we could we could share with the council members if there's an interest. Um, well, if that information exists, I can, I can dig it out myself at an earliest we had that, so I'll take a look at it. Okay. Council Member Barton? Yes, I, I would like to um, ask that we have an item for um, uh, AB 1400 come before us at our next meeting. Okay, and, and any specific, are you asking for a consideration of uh, support or non-support? Yes, exactly. Uh, you, you might articulate um, what the essence of AB 1400 is for our viewers. Um, uh, AB 1400 um, talks about um, the Medicare for All um, proposition um, and uh, making uh, making health care more affordable and many uh, uh, many cities are um, passing similar uh, kinds of resolutions and, and I wanted to see if um, Morrow Bay would uh, like to join that uh, movement. I, I do believe that it did AB 1400 to pass the uh, Assembly Appropriations Committee uh, a few days ago and it's headed to the state um, the entire assembly for a vote, if I recall correctly. Exactly. So we can show our support for that. Got you, Councilmember Edis. I was going to bring the same thing forward after the comment that we got today, and just uh, my own support for it in the past. That I and I think it aligns well with our goal in community health. Looking at health care for all um, is the gist of AB fourteen hundred. And if our city supports the idea of health care for all with this specific legislation, and so I would support that as a future agenda item. It seems to me, it would, if I'm just discussing with you, it'd be an authorization for the if if we approved it for the mayor to send a letter of support. Okay, yeah. and I. Um, I'm looking for other heads. I, I'm I'm supportive of that. I see Councilmember Ford as well. So we do have it looks like uh, obviously a majority that support that. So thank you for bringing that up. So Mayor, could you clarify that action, please? I'm not sure is is AE fourteen hundred going to come to Council for discussion or is the yes it will come to Council. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be agendized. So by this, it'll be a future agenda item. Um, which would be discussed with with council. Okay. Uh, whether you, you we support it's just like any other legislative uh, item like housing or or those right. issues that are up and so. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah I support that. It will will be discussed. Oh, yes. Openly. Okay. We have support for that. Anything else? Wow. We were articulate this evening. Well, thank you all. <laughs> um, excellent meeting. Appreciate your time and, and efforts. Um, the next regular meeting of the Morro Bay City Council will be held on Tuesday, February the 8th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. via teleconference. Thank you all. Be safe and be well, and have a pleasant evening. Thank you, everyone.